A key simplification that allows us to calculate orbitals efficiently and at all is that the orbitals of molecules which describe where electrons are in space within molecules can be well approximated by linear combinations of what are called the atomic orbitals. Atomic orbitals are essentially solutions to the atomic problem which specifies a single nucleus with protons and neutrons at the center and electrons moving around the nucleus. And the problem asks the question, where are those electrons located in space and what are their energies? Since the atomic orbitals form the building blocks of larger, more useful molecular orbitals, we need to understand those before we can really get to the heart of molecular orbital theory. That's what we'll do in this video. To the organic chemist, the molecule hexane is one of the simplest and most common organic hydrocarbons. But to the physical chemist interested in orbitals and the positions of electrons, hexane is an exceedingly complicated molecule. It's got six carbon atoms and 14 hydrogen atoms for a total of 38 valence electrons. And even ignoring the core electrons and only asking where the valence electrons are located in space, this turns into a very complicated problem when you realize that there are 38 different functions f, which I'll denote as psi in this video and moving forward, 38 different orbital functions that we need to specify in order to specify an orbital solution to the problem that we outlined in the last video. Finding these functions de novo is impossible for a human and even extremely difficult for a computer. But an important approximation that we make is that the 38 functions, psi, are linear combinations or weighted sums of simpler atomic orbitals. This is a nice approximation because the number of atomic orbitals that we need to remember the shapes of is relatively small. For organic chemistry, the elements of organic chemistry are hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and some of the halogens. Even smaller than the number of elements are the number of valence atomic orbitals that we need to remember. A further assumption is that all of the atomic orbitals for each of these elements look the same. What differs between these elements are their numbers of electrons and their occupancy. In this video, I want to look at the atomic orbitals in terms of their energies and shapes. And in the next video, we'll talk about how the atomic orbitals combine with one another to form molecular orbitals. So across the second row of the periodic table is where we find the majority of the organic elements, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, for example. There are five valence atomic orbitals that are most interesting to us in organic chemistry. It's the 1s level, which is the lowest energy or most stable level, the 2s level, and then the three so-called degenerate or equal energy 2p levels, and we denote these with labels to indicate their directions in space, as you'll see shortly, x, y, and z. So these are the relative orbital energies. 1s is the lowest, 2s in the middle, 2p's are the highest. What do the shapes look like? Well, the 1s and 2s orbitals are quite easy to remember. They're just spherical. The atom is located at the center, and in the 2s orbital, there's actually a little slice of a node in the middle, and so we see a region of opposite shading in the middle and another larger region on the outside. The 2p orbitals look a little more complex, and each of these includes a region of no electron density at all, what we call a node, at the position of the nucleus. The 2p orbitals point in the x, y, and z directions, and they look something like dumbbells. So if we establish our axes, the px orbital is aligned along that x-axis, like so, with one of the lobes of the dumbbell being shaded, meaning having one sign of that probability function, and the other being unshaded. The py orbital will be aligned along the y direction with one side shaded and the other side unshaded again. And then the pz orbital will be aligned along the z axis. The elements of organic chemistry differ in their occupancy and energies of these orbitals. So the patterns are fairly natural. As we increase the atomic number of the element, we increase the occupancy within these orbitals. So for hydrogen, hydrogen brings a single 1s electron to the table. When we slide along to carbon, we've moved up to a situation where carbon now has six electrons total, four in its valence shell, two in the 2s and two in the 2p. And as we move to nitrogen, we add one more, and oxygen, we add yet another electron there. 
Importantly, as we move from left to right, as you probably already know, electronegativity increases. Orbital energies decrease. This goes for both the atomic orbitals and the molecular orbitals that use those atoms as building blocks. A decrease in orbital energy with increasing electronegativity makes intuitive sense, and it's an idea that you should commit to memory. As orbital energies go down, the orbital becomes more stable, the electrons less likely to react and more tightly held by the nucleus.